Hey there, everybody. Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Now we'll go live uh, and see what happens here. Here we go. We're live and we're okay now. We're live and we're recording. Hello to everybody. This is our uh, this is our Monday pop up show, and um, I'll explain why I'm in a different uh, uh, area uh, than I am usually. Hold on a second. I just want to mute this site. Okay, there we go. Okay, and uh, uh, there we go. I can I can see it. Here we go over here. Uh, and I want to make sure that we're all on, on, we're supposed to be on Facebook. Okay. If you want to get a hold of us, Facebook is where you can get a hold of us. And let me just uh, do this to make sure the Facebook is working fine. Okay. Everything's working just great. How are you, everybody? Okay. Let me now bring in all these people. Boy, we got a ton of them waiting. There are uh, how many? Ten, uh, nine participants so far. Admit all. Here we go. There's Marjorie Miller, Mandy O'Brien, Scott Bodiger, Charlene. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Mike Chisholm, Len LaFrisco, um, Charlie Wallace, Paul Levin. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there's our old friend Edward Berger. Hello, Edward. That's right. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> get the right see I, i've changed everything here and i had to go get a different place to put in the audio anyway i'm here the reason i have a different background in back of me is that for some reason my zoom on the machine that i normally use for this show which is a pc quit allowing me to get a, a signal i don't know what it is i've been working on it all weekend it didn't work so i guess you don't mind this this new picture of me here you know, uh, so uh, I appreciate your indulgence. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. There we go. Scott, where's your picture, Scott? We don't see you. I don't know. I uh, I didn't see it either. I did it where I normally do it. But maybe I'll log out and come back. I'll do it that way. I had to hit start video on mine, too. Turned off. My, I had to turn my camera on. For some reason. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. Say it's. There you go. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, You're Charlie. Welcome, You're welcome to Alex Bennett's tech support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. It it's strange for me to do it this way because usually I'm used to looking over here. Yeah. And um, uh, it's uh, I don't know. I couldn't figure out what what went. All of a sudden, it wasn't working. You know, they must, have, they must have pushed an update or something because mine was weird too. So yeah, yeah they must have updated it. Yeah. Okay, because I'm doing this on the one we normally do our nighttime show on, hmm. uh, and it, I know it works just fine. You know, but then it's a PC, and That's maybe wrong. something that was going on with the uh, this is a Mac rather. There may be something going on with the PCs and so on. So how are you all? What if uh, you know? Um, you. That's the most important thing. Are you all right? With yeah, yeah. How, how, am yeah. I do, how am I doing, Marjorie? Do you? You're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah, I've had a little, you know, it's been a hard weekend. It's uh, a hard weekend because uh, the one thing that Shecky and I had consistently with each other over the years was every Friday, Saturday, or Sunday we would talk to each other on the phone. And as Marjorie knows, I would always say to her, "I got to call Shecky," you know. Mm. And this went on for maybe 25, 30 years, every weekend. I thought about you at one o'clock Pacific that day, and I thought, boy, he must be really feeling it right now. Well, I felt it this weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although I had one other weekend last weekend, but I saw him. I was in mm -hmm. the hospital, so I physically saw him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's so un, it was so unexpected. Yeah. Uh, I figured he would outlive me. You know, hmm. that was my thought on it. And uh, apparently uh, that was not to be. So what have you, you know. So did anybody watch the Oscars last night? I did. I, did. I actually did watch some of it. It actually was better than it, it really had been was. In yeah, I thought years. so. Much, very. In years, the best in years. They mm. got back to basics. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, the only reason that Will Smith could slug uh, what's his name <laughs> was because 
the stage, the way they did it, the people were all on the stage kind of sitting yeah. there. And so and all ta tables. Yeah, yeah, he could just walk right straight across and hit them. You couldn't do it here. You'd have to walk up on stage. You'd have to get an Oscar before you could slap <laughs> somebody. <laughs> grab you first. They, yeah. they must have had some security down there for sure, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. but I, I, you know, that that's to say that that same thing will happen again. And, no, you know, no. that was a one-time only event. It, it was. No, and uh, I thought uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a fine job. He did a great yeah. job, and yeah, it I was thought short. So they, they included all the categories, except when he went into the audience to talk mm. to the audience and have people answer questions, and he tried to get Malala to answer <laughs> a question, and it made you know it was kind of asking her to lose her dignity for a few minutes. Yeah. When when the question I don't know what the question was, but she said, uh, "I just deal with peace." You know, I mean, she said <laughs> that, but she looked like she was feeling terribly uncomfortable. But that was the only sour note in the whole, you know, two and a, three and a half hours, unless you feel that, you know, everywhere, everybody, everything, anyone at once that we shouldn't want. Have people, have you guys seen that movie? Is it any good? Um, I didn't like it. Marjorie didn't, didn't like, like it, it either. I, I, I'm I going back to watch it again because I think there's a level that I didn't watch it on. Mm. But, you know, if you have to watch it again, then yeah. I think you've missed something. Yeah. yeah. What's with you? You're wobbling all over the place. I'm Marjorie. taking off my <laughs> top layer. <laughs> don't take off anymore. We don't want people to go into shock. Okay. <laughs> But uh, no, it it uh, it was um, uh, I thought for the most part a very dignified, mm -hmm. you know, give out the awards and go home. It's, it's, yeah, are you raising your hand? Uh, I didn't watch it long enough. Yeah. Um, Will Smith had to present. What? What? No, he wasn't, wasn't there. He's not allowed to go for ten years. No. Oh, banned. okay. I missed that part. Okay. He, he, he's banned for ten years. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know if he should be banned for 10 years. I do. I don't. Me too. Yeah, he fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> and I like Will Smith. He's yeah. one of the I few celebrities anymore. I follow on Instagram. I like him, but I agree. I don't think he should be able to go for a while. Well, I yeah. I, I don't. I, I think he should be allowed to. I, you know. I, you know, no, that was rude. Jada it's giving him permission, Alex. Jada shouldn't be allowed to go because she's Definitely. had influence on him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was. Uh, I thought it was just. I thought it was a very uh, decent uh, 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 show. I and, and and for for a change, the people I was rooting for were winning. So that's that's kind of a nice thing, you know. I mean, um, I I wanted the kid from Indiana Jones to win. Yes. Uh, only because I, I just felt that after that many years of not being able to get a job in the business and finally <laughs> getting one, he deserved it. Yeah. And Jamie Lee Curtis, when she won, I literally yelled out, yay. Yeah. I, thought that was cool. I, was happy. I was happy for that. And I was very happy for Brendan Frazier. This yes. is, yeah. You know, if you think about it, the awards this year were really a comeback year for people. I mean, right. if you consider the kid from Indiana Jones hasn't made a movie in 30 years, you know, <laughs> the he's, Goonies. Worked, he's worked as a stunt coordinator and things like that. Uh, and then uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, who, whose career has been rather mediocre. Uh, in fact, her whole career has been mediocre, if you think about it. You know, it's called know. Wanda. That's what I always think was yeah. Yeah. I like. Yeah. yeah, that was true lies. One. She was great in true lies. Yeah. She was yeah, awesome. Well, that's, yeah. True yeah. Lies. Yes, yeah, this, she was good this, in that. This was like a comeback, you know, and yeah. I, that's that's terrific, you know. Uh, and and uh, Brendan Fraser is a comeback, uh, and Michelle Yeoh, in some ways, is a comeback because she's been around for years, and I've enjoyed her in the films she's done. I enjoyed her when she worked with Jackie Chan over in Hong Kong. I mean, she was she was doing stunts that most women would never try, and uh, it was just nice to see her win. So it was really a nice. But for best picture, I mean, given ten years, is anybody even going to remember this movie? You know, but would they have remembered, for instance, mm. All Quiet on the Western Front, which which I thought was the best picture, incredible film. It was mm. great. 
And Marjorie watched Tar. I didn't because I, I don't like to be bored for three hours. <laughs> but but uh, uh, Tar uh, was a, a bravura performance by Kate Winslet. I hear is a terrific picture. Not Kate Winslet. I mean, uh, Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Uh, Kate Winslet is the uh, actress that James Cameron keeps trying to drown. Uh, but you know i mean it it i thought it was i thought it was a nice night and i was happy with the things that won except for i, I wanted all quiet on the western front to win for two reasons number one really good movie if you haven't seen it it's on netflix it's easily available and it it's really really good Very and good. the fact is if it had one for best picture it would be the first movie to be made twice and win an Academy Award twice. Oh, yeah. Because in 1930, All Quiet on the Western Front won the Academy Award. <clears throat> but it did win for Best Foreign Picture, and I think that's why it didn't win for Best Picture, because people already had voted for it, you know, and they felt, well, why should I give it two, two awards? But I was, you know, it's a, it's a great movie, and if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's really terrific. You know. Yeah, so As what's the deal with Netflix? What do you mean? What's the deal with Netflix? That they're allowed to have movies that are that it, it's not really on Netflix. It was just made by Netflix. Well, no, they, they're allowed to be considered as long as they're movies and not series. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know? In other words, they they paid to have this movie made, and I think it did get. I think it did get released in theaters for at least a week, which makes it qualify. That's can't. that was my question. I thought yeah. it would have to be in the theaters. Well, in the last couple of years, a lot of the streaming services have won the Academy Award. Last year, it was Apple with, uh, oh. yeah. So it's two years in a row now. So, I mean, the, the distribution on the on films have changed. You know, they've gone from being something you distribute to movie theaters to something you distribute online. So that's, that's you know, that's cool. You know, I think that's wonderful. Hey, here comes Mark Thorner, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't seen Mark in a while. Yeah, uh, you get me again. Huh? You get me again, Alex. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You're using a blue screen back there? Because I know you're not outdoors. Uh, no, this is baked into uh, Zoom, apparently. I mean, I could take any image and throw it in the back. Yeah. It's, yeah, but it's it's amazing that, no, I don't have a blue or green behind me. It's just yeah. doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what I what I did, what I do, I um, I, I I was going to use a background here. I don't have my green screen up back here right now because I put it away for the weekend, and I'm too lazy to bring it out for just this show. Uh, but uh, I uh, we love you too, Alex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a crap about you. But I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of where was it? Where's my uh, green screen? Here we go. Background and effects. Take this off. Here we go. Here's my there living room during the day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have the living room during the night on the night show. This is this is during <laughs> the day. Uh, but uh I don't I don't really care for that anyway. So you know, I, I figure I don't I like this it's just simple. Oh, what happened here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think you're on a green shirt. shirt. Well, I here's what I've got to do. Hold on a second. Got to, <laughs> what it's is a, that? It's a That's blue great. shirt. Well, here's the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He's disappearing. <laughs> Dang. I think Talk my mushrooms head. just kicked in. <laughs> here's my head. Uh let me see here. Let me get this. Let me turn this. Uh, get go to backgrounds. The weirdest weird. strip tease ever. Yeah, go <laughs> go to the sun, then it's go like, to. Don't uh, take it off. Take it off. Put it on. Put it on, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, that worked. That worked okay. Yeah, that works now. Ah, there we go. Ah. Either that, or I can I can blur myself in the background. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's for people who don't want to show how messy their their house is. <laughs> anyway, uh, how does that happen? What? What just happened? Where's you, the can, you can do can it. Anybody, can, can anybody explain that? Because I understand the, the background, but but you, you, what you saw was your your overshirt. Oh, oh my! And shirt. then and then the, the the rest of it was your it living was, room. It was chroma keying on my shirt. Is blue. Yeah. Uh, and it shouldn't. It actually shouldn't chroma key because it's my. I, I have mine set to green. Green. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I mean, I could set up my green screen and you'd see I can use any amount of backgrounds I want to, but. That is absolutely startling. I, that's just. <laughs> I just feel this is a simpler show. Magic. Um, how's everything down there in the wonderful world of Florida? Uh, goofy as ever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I had an interesting night last night. Mm -hmm. I was at an art gallery and this is for off. Well, some people, uh, people from the, the past, mm -hmm. uh, that might cross over into some of the stuff that you did back in the day. It's not for a discussion, but I, I have to say something. It's like, Oh my God! I don't believe this. Wait, is it the police officers that arrested him in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No. Oh my God! There's a deep dive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, no. you know more about my life than I do. Uh, so, um, this has to do when you were doing like the the, the Midnight Blue era. Let's. Put oh it yeah, Midnight Blue. I'm very proud of Midnight Blue. Yeah. Well, I was hanging out with uh, Gloria Leonard's daughter. Oh really? Um. <laughs> the daughter of the gentleman who created deep throat wow uh, damiana yeah his daughter his daughter these are all daughters because they're all dead oh yes i know believe yeah. me but it was really what did you head out uh, hang out with dead porn people is that what you're doing? <laughs> no no is no, that no, your, no is that your kink no it was a support group <laughs> dead porn people no but it was just interesting that uh no i didn't bring up your name uh <laughs> but it was just interesting that a lot of my friends who are illustrators or writers, mm -hmm. how they ended up working freelance in various aspects. Uh, you, I mean, you do what you have to do to make money uh, to pay your bills. Well, it was a lot of people. A lot of people paid uh, for uh, a lot of people worked in the porn industry to get their film chops down. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Al Goldstein oh, produced a film called It Happened in Hollywood that was a porn film. And one of the crew members on it was, uh, what's his name, who did Nightmare on Elm Street? Uh, Wes Craven. Craven. Wes Craven wow. was working it. Yeah. I, I suspected there's even a lot more. There's there's a, because they got a lot. Okay, the New York films were getting people from NYU. Mm -hmm. Read into that what you want. Well, uh, I'll give you another example. Out on the West Coast, a lot of the people that worked on, say, Flesh Gordon, which oh yeah, Dave Allen. Film. Yeah, Jet Dansford Allen. Yeah, believe a me. lot of these people went over to uh, work at Industrial Light and Magic and do Star Wars, do the yeah. special effects for Star Wars. So, you know, the, the, it, it was a, but it was one place you could get your hands on a camera, yeah. you know, and learn your you learn your chops. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's very cool, very cool. But uh, anyway, so you know. Um, uh, that that's interesting that you were with them. Gloria Leonard uh, never liked me. Uh, oh, well, no, only for one reason. That uh, I was doing my radio show one day, and somebody called up and said, uh, uh, "Whatever happened to Gloria Leonard?" I said, "Didn't you hear she died in an automobile crash upstate?" And that's what I used to do to people I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> so people were like calling her and saying are you are you still alive you <laughs> you were dead? and i always meant that as a joke anyway you know i would say mark thorner died in a car crash upstate that was just a joke on my part did it have to be upstate was that always the it always yeah, seemed yeah. funnier when yeah. i said upstate yeah. if i didn't say upstate it wouldn't be funny uh, right you know okay yeah <laughs> That's, that's so for some reason, Mandy, especially if you came from New York and you, you know goes upstate, yeah, it's it, okay. It, it, I was it's gonna say funny. it must be an inside thing, insider. But it was in a in a car crash upstate. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, too bad, too bad. We're sad, but anyway. Yeah, but Gloria was a nice lady. She was a very nice. Lady. She was a woman who worked in finance, I think, in banking, and and went into porn, and became the uh, editor of uh, High Society magazine. Love talking about. What? Okay. What, 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 what? I must be must be. Lynn right, well, doesn't have his camera. I foam muted. Yeah, oh. yeah. He'll be back any minute now. Oh, here comes Don Don uh, Giller, uh, yeah. who who um, 
it called me a lot in the last couple of days because he's the guy that posts all the David Letterman clips. Mo oh most my God, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Letterman is doing it too, uh, and he's working. For, you work for the Letterman people on that as well, right? Uh, you're talking to me. I, I apologize. Yeah, yes, yes. You work for the Letterman <laughs> people as well. Um, the, the the video that that they put up, the mm -hmm. long one. Mm -hmm. uh, I had no involvement, mm -hmm. none at all. Yeah. There's a person named Walter Kim who's in charge of the uh, the Letterman channel. He yeah. put that together. Oh, you mean the thing for, for Rick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying you work for the Letterman channel as well, right? As a Only know, only as a consultant. As a consultant. Um, uh, I, I, I'm sort of on retainer. That's, he that's probably, I, I would say, this is a good example. He probably knows more about David Letterman than David Letterman knows about himself. Yes. That well, people, that's, that's the, that's the, another tragedy of Rick's death. Is he was the encyclopedia. Yeah, really. you're right. You're right. God. And and that loss is, as I, as I wrote, when I wrote about him, is incalculable. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, he kept all the archives and things like that. You know, that was his part of his job. So that that uh, video you, you had on on the other night, the day with Shecky, was absolutely a incredible. A day with Shecky. It yeah. was. It really yeah. gave me an insight into that guy. Yeah. You know, that I did not have. Well, there I mean, that was that was done to I, at the time when I did it. It was to document what we would do on a given Saturday when I would go out there. Mm -hmm. I had to go out on the train and then we went out and got some sushi and then we went back to his place and looked at all this crap that he what had collected. Wonderful stuff. What do you what mean great, crap? Well, I'm, 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 saying that, I'm saying that lovingly. Yeah. But, you know, it, I mean, just a ton of stuff. I mean, I wish I had actually done a, a more in-depth coverage of that part of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I didn't. I may, I may have. I got to go look and see my uh, extra footage that I have about that, uh, because I was thinking they want they want some videos and stuff of of Shecky, and I was thinking of putting something together that takes away all the traveling out there and all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and just cuts to the chase. But we'll, we'll see. Someone you know, told. Hmm? I'm sorry. Was, I was just going to say it not only showed an insight into Shecky's life, but it showed a really insight into your friendship. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know something that's that's uh, I, I, yeah. it's interesting. You people really like that. I played that more for me than for you. I I just figured, um, uh, you know, I would play it, and uh, but the fact that you really liked it, you know, uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Did I miss something? Is this on your page? Yeah, it's on my. It's up there now. My the show that I did on Friday. Okay, uh, I, the, I think oh, I missed the first part of that show. I run the video. This video of a trip to Shecky's. Gotcha. And, uh, it, I'll uh, make sure I can watch it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, but uh, that uh, it's amazing. I don't have more stuff of Shecky over the years. We traveled. Here, here's an interesting thing. We traveled across the United States together. Uh, it was just you know we decided uh, I had to come come back to New York. I had to pick up stuff in California. Come back to New York. So he said, "Well, I'll meet you in California." And we'll get get a car, and we'll just drive out together. And I figured, what? That's great—a road trip with Shecky across the United States. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> <To begin Yeah. laughs> Three thousand miles. Hey. To begin with, I don't, I don't, I don't have an inch of video on him because every time I turn on the camera, he'd hide his face. <laughs> so you know, he didn't want to be videotaped. So I got nothing but footage taken out of the window of the car as we were traveling along. And uh, to travel with Shecky, you got to really know him, and you had to have a, a sense of who he was, because he didn't like to talk much. You know, when if he wanted to talk, then you'd start talking, but don't bother him when he wants to shut down. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I think part of our, I, I said to him once, I say, I think part of our relationship is that I fully understand that. You know, you could be married to me more than you could be married to any woman because she say, well, how are you feeling today? You know, and she, you're not going to say it and I'm never going to ask it, you know, <laughs> so. but that was my, my, I just think about those things. You know, we uh, traveled all the way across the United States by car. He was the, he was the navigator. 
he he sat in the in his seat over here you know and he uh uh just uh kept saying turn left here turn right there hey you know we hit a traffic jam he said here's how to get out of it and then he'd get us around it he was great at that and he didn't even break the door handle yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we went to you know we went to uh graceland together we went to sun records together i mean that was all part of the trip that we took this cave there's some caves that coming up that are um mammoth caves am i thinking yes. of, right in cave? kentucky in kentucky yeah, yeah exactly mammoth caves and uh we went we took that tour man that was scary that was cool i've been in there just very, a couple of years ago yeah it's nice well, it's very cool you better wear a sweater down there. oh yeah it was very cool yeah yeah, yeah. and and uh, it, it's funny i have a horrible horrible claustrophobia and yet we went through things where my claustrophobia should have acted up and it didn't act up at all it's big it's big yeah my my uh my son-in-law was with us. He was six eight, trying to go through that place. <laughs> some of those places. Oh, He's really? A boy. Yeah, here. It, yeah. I wish I I wish I had taken some video uh -huh. of Shecky going through that. But unfortunately, if I turn the camera on him, he'd turn his back. You know, so it, it didn't make any sense. You know, but yet he would sit for these things that I did when I went out to see him. That's the funny part about it. You know, so. But you may may notice he's not terribly communicative communicative on that tape either, you know. So, but uh, yeah, I found over the last couple of years, uh, I, I I talked to Shecky a lot over the last couple of years, and I found that um, when you got him going on something that was part of his collection that he was excited yeah. about, yeah. he would he'd have a yarn for everything. Like if we talked about a certain Superman incarnation or th something like that he'd be able to go on and on and on and on and on about it uh when i asked him about wrestling you know he used to go to the uh the old wwwf bruno, bruno san martino stuff back oh yeah in the day. yeah and yeah. he would and he would talk endlessly about that and when, whenever you just it was it was so cool just like and i mean we all saw it here i think more than anything we would see him talk about uh old films here oh. and he had every little piece of arcane knowledge at his seemingly at his fingertips and it seems like all of the things that he collected uh which i never got a chance to see the basement but but he told me all about it and everything that was in there it seems like every single thing that he cared about he just committed to memory every aspect of it and i just i love that about him yeah well i mean that that, that was very true it but it it also i mean um you know, when I often got proud is when we would discuss something and I would say, well, so-and-so did such and so. She says, no, he didn't. And I would go look it up and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> and there were very few times that I was right. But when I was, man, I just felt so good about that. See, Jackie, I was right. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, I mean, it's funny. We did a, we did kind of a memorial what did we when we did the show last week he wasn't dead yet was he yes. no he, no he was not doing I, well, right he no. wasn't dead he died on friday and i did a show with you people on oh. friday yeah so i on, missed that one i was very sad to miss that one so the, first, the first week that he wasn't <laughs> there uh, uh the first week that he wasn't there um uh, it did just didn't feel right you know i always notice him right up in the corner he did this show religiously you know and uh um uh, i know he was in the hospital when we talked on the monday show last time yeah but um your midriff is, is showing marjorie Ooh, <laughs> i'd be un unfunded or whatever you call it uh, well, <laughs> Now your show, you won't get, you'd be unmonetized for the show now. Demonetized, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, screw them. They're always demonetizing me lately, and then I have to protest it, and then they say, okay, there was nothing wrong. And I'm going, then don't waste my time. But anyway, uh, oh, we're talking about YouTube, uh, which we won't even get into that. But I'm saying that, you know, we talked about them last time. This time we're talking about them in, in kind of a different way. Uh, we're talking about like the, the fun little foibles that were Rick Sheckman. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the not so fun. Huh? 
-hmm. and the not so fun and know. the not so fun yeah i mean I, I you know i knew him when i first knew him nobody thought to call him shecky they all called we we all called him rick he called me ben mm -hmm. which is my real name and and uh he became shecky because that's what letterman started calling him Ooh. the name was thrown upon him by by uh, by by letterman and it stuck i mean so everybody around the office called him shecky you know and, and they spelled it and they spelled it wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not S C H S H E C K Y. So yeah, yeah. I I love the guy and I miss him. You know, I I'm sure I'll miss him more as time goes on mm -hmm. because all those little hallmarks, you know, where you where you where you associate him with your life and then he's not there any longer, and that that's when it starts to hurt even more and more. Uh, you know, I think I'll miss him at New Year. Every New Year, most New Years except during COVID, he was here. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, two people who came to New Year's are dead. Wow. So I don't, think we, can, I don't think we should march. I don't think we should hold our New Year's any longer. Yeah. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not a good song. <laughs> you know, for uh, me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jack, Jack Garfine, and uh, now now Shecky. You know, and Steve. And uh, Steve. Well, Steve, now we, did we did, we did New Year's at his place? Yeah. 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 So anyway, you know, there's far too many people, you know, the, here's what gets me. And I, 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 Don, you probably would agree with this. We talk about Shecky and his encyclopedic mind about film and the fact that you could go to him for facts and so on. And he was a great consultant to, to anybody who wanted to know about films and old films, not only silence, but also stuff from the 30s, 40s, 50s. He, he stopped at the 50s, I think. Uh, really. Uh, his knowledge. He didn't care about anything past the 50s. Uh, and uh, I think about all that that was crammed into his brain. And when he died, it all disappeared. Mm -hmm. You know, so what's the worth of collecting it in your brain? You know, you get what I'm saying? It's just, mm -hmm. it's the futility of life, basically. Well, you need, you need to get, there needs to be an output for it. And he never provided that output in in print um or or uh video yeah you know he's kept it to himself i mean not i don't mean that selfishly i, I mean, mean he could have he could have lectured he could have exactly. written books yeah. but he didn't do any of those right. i think he was probably too introverted to do that yeah yeah but you know you also i think if you have that kind of knowledge it's almost incumbent upon you to share it with the rest of the world mm -hmm. you know in some form uh and uh you know i i suggested to him once that we start a website and start putting a lot of the old films that he had that now reside with the library of congress uh on on uh, digitize them and and put them into a site and he said ah, a lot of other, pe other people are already doing that you know he well, didn't one, huh? one thing that i appreciated that he did and it was very small but if you were friends with him on facebook he would post a picture of something vintage or old Oh yeah, yeah. and get a little good. clip of his, you know, what this is. Mm -hmm. I always Love found that. that really cool. His web page kind of served that function, but not completely, not as completely as it could have been. And the films that he owned were so good uh, and so valuable that the the uh, the uh, uh, Library of Congress bought them from him. Uh, paid him, I think, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for them. Wow. These are films that he didn't know even he, he most of the people who collected those films, they were not owned by the movie companies and therefore were considered stolen. Mm. But the thing was that they didn't take care of these films. And so the whole histories of film were dying because the movie companies didn't think to restore them or to go down into the into the vaults and make sure the nitrate prints weren't falling apart and the, you know and so on and it was guys like Shecky who literally collected these films illegally who saved the movie industry in many cases mm -hmm. saved its history uh and and for that i think he was eminently uh uh, uh just a, a treasure you know 
I loved what Leonard Balton said about him. How uh, I went, I went to, I went to a flea market yesterday, um, and I did that because I just thought I would. Did you come back with of, any? Did you come back with any fleas? <laughs> nope, not yesterday. Okay, uh, but I'll keep you posted if I decide to do it again. Yeah. And um, I, 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 I love that aspect. Conventions and things where people will go to these uh these places and 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 find old things and i i when leonard malton talked about that and he talked about when he would go to some of these old film conventions and and trading events that would happen and and he talked about how you had to beat you couldn't beat shecky there shecky was one of the first people there and he would pick through things you know almost to the point where he would leave a note saying you know rick was here um <laughs> i like that I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something the first time i really ever got to know rick I, I got to meet him through my friend, Steve Weiner, who was working over at the, originally was working over the, he's the guy that got Shecky to be able to work at the Letterman show. Uh, they got him the job. But um, uh, I got to know Shecky and he'd say, well, why don't you meet me down on 7th Street, 7th Avenue between, I think it was like, I don't know, 42nd and 43rd or something like that. And what these guys were doing on a Saturday, and this was 30, 35, 40 years ago, maybe more, 45 years ago, they were trading films out of the back, tr back the trunks of their cars. <laughs> Here, I'll, buy, I'll trade you this one for this one, or I'll buy this one from you. And there was an entire flea market happening out of the trunks of cars. Hi. They would all show up there. I guess Marjorie went to answer the door. Uh, went to went to went to trade with each other, and then after that was over, they would all go over to a screening room they had created in the basement of this industrial building, and sit there endlessly for hours watching old films, silent films, old films, rare films, and so on mm. that these people had collected. What was strange about that? I remember the day that they were raided by the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and why were they raided by the cops? Not because the cops felt that they were selling and trading old films. They went in there and were threatening to arrest them because they if somebody had seen all these guys going into this <laughs> building on Saturday afternoon and figured it was some kind of gay club. <laughs> <laughs> And they weren't far wrong. These were film collectors. <laughs> <laughs> and and I thought that was hilarious. They had to say to them, no, we're we're just a film club. We show films to each other. And the cops, the, the, the cops couldn't even wrap their minds around, yeah. them, but, you know. But uh, it was quite an illicit time back then because the, the movie companies would sue you because they considered if you had a copy of their movie. It's got to be purloined or stolen or have been copied illegally because the movie companies in those days did not let their films out. You had to rent them to show them in a movie theater and so on and so forth. So any film that anyone would own. So they were these guys were dealing in contraband, as it were. As years went on, the movie company suddenly realized how much these guys were saving a part of movie history i mean a lot of it would be gone if it weren't for those guys mm -hmm. so you know like shecky i think had the only what am i trying to think of there was a there was a vi there was a kinescope of his show that he had a copy of and that uh, i think it was nbc said the copy doesn't exist anymore i think it was something like the the first hour of the of the tonight show or something when it started up that had no sound on the on the on the film. It may have been that. And Shecky said, "Well, I got one down in my basement with sound." <laughs> I, I have I have a similar story, but late night related. Yeah. Um, in the fall of '85. Yeah. Uh, it was on a sat. It was a Saturday night show in place of uh, Saturday Night Live, which which they would do uh, rarely. And this was called the Tri-State Special. Yeah. Where uh, the, the concept is irrelevant. Um, they taped the show, they played it back, and they realized that the color was all wrong, and it, it was not airable. And it turns out that Rick, Rick in his office at NBC had taped it on his, on his three-quarter U-matic 
mm-hmm. and and saved the show because he had it, you know, and the color was fine. So they used that as 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 they used that to air it. Yeah, and and Rick was reprimanded for taping a show in his office. <laughs> <laughs> but yet he saved their asses. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, in this particular case, I can't remember. It may not have been the Tonight Show, but I can't remember what it was right now. And I don't remember a lot of things any longer. But I do remember it was something that they did not have. <laughs> a uh, a uh, it may have, could have been the uh, the, vid- the show our the our town with Frank Sinatra that they did live or something like that, but they, they, they had no sound. And then finally, Shecky said, yeah, I've got it in my basement with sound. <laughs> he said, well, why don't you call them up and say you have a copy of it? And he said, cause then they'll arrest me. <laughs> you know? he said, I'm not going to supply them with the audio version of, it. I think eventually he did when all things were, you know, <laughs> easy to do that way, but it, it was silly. It was silly the stuff he had that other people didn't have. Well, yeah. even into the modern era, like you know, you think about the, the the most famous example I can think of, and Don probably has some more obscure ones, but like the Bill Hicks set on Letterman on late late show that was cut. And when they decided to, you know, make things right and 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 put it on and and have you know Bill's mom on as a guest and whatnot <laughs> and talk about it, they didn't have it, but Checky had it and and he went and supplied it to them again. Yeah. Well, the thing was that um, uh, what was funny about the Bill Hicks thing was that I did an interview with Bill Hicks the day after they canned him from the, the mm. from the Letterman show. And he told the full story. And um, it was uh, it was fascinating. You know, and supposedly Dave always felt guilty about that, but probably only because Hicks died. If he hadn't died, I don't think he'd feel guilty about anything, you know regarding mm. the situation but it was a the re, in case people don't know bill hicks who was a great comic just a terrific comic uh, one of the best i've ever seen uh, died of uh, pancreatic cancer at 32 which unheard of and um uh because of that all of a sudden dave felt guilty about it you know because he died. And, and the reason why Dave didn't run the, the segment, he had just started at CBS. It was like a couple of weeks into the CBS run. And he was just jittery about anything he would put on, you know, that it would make the network mad or would cause problems with standards and practices or whatever. And uh, if you go back and look at the set, and it's readily available, uh, among others, through Don Giller. <laughs> uh, uh, if you look at the set, Leave my name out of this. <laughs> there, was nothing, <laughs> there was nothing wrong with the set. You know, it was, you know, it was perfectly, it was perfect. Um, you know, he was talking about, you know, how how uh, uh, all the people say they have, uh, you know, respect for life and the abortion thing and everything like that. They have a, they believe in the right to life. So why pick it a, a pa- Planned Parenthood? Why don't you pick it a cemetery? <laughs> and and uh, uh, apparently none of that played with, the, not with the censors. It was just Dave looked at it and said, or had been there when it was done and said, nah, can't do that. So they replaced it with a, they did when they, before they did ever did a, a, a late show, uh, they, they did test shows and they brought members of their, of their staff out to do interviews, just to test, you know, the, the set, the lighting, all of that. And they had something with one of their guys who had been a stand-up comic or whatever, who came out and just talked with Dave. They cut that in. Well, what they, did, Sheft, they did, it, what, what Bill Sheff did a stand-up on that one of the sitcom shows. And, yeah. and that's what, they, so they subbed that for that. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it was, it was, it was terrible. I, I, and he, you know, I talked to him the next day. And um, um, he was uh, he he was pretty sad about it. He says, first time I ever did my set anywhere on television, where I felt I finally people could find out what my act was, who I was. You know, he said it was that perfect a set. And and he said when they told me they weren't going to run it, he said I just you know just wasn't right. You know, so and everybody felt guilty about it and then i remember the day bill hicks died i had found out about it because i think i was over at caroline's and somebody said to me uh, did you hear bill hicks just died 
And I went, wow. I, so I immediately, the first guy I called was Shecky to tell him that Bill Hicks had died. And I said, did you hear about Bill Hicks? And he said, what's he done now? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> died. Yeah. You know, and I said, well, he died. And he said, what? And then he went up and told Dave. And Dave was just, you know, beside himself. Because he had done, how I don't know how many times he was on the Letterman show, especially on Late Night. Yeah. Um, but he was there. At least I know. Giller would probably be able to give you the number. Yeah, no, I, 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 I there. I put up a Bill Hicks uh, compilation of all of his appearances, all, all yeah. of his late night appearances, as well as 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 the late show appearance from 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 the broadcast that was cut, not not from the two thousand nine uh, when when his mom showed up, uh, and and she and Dave reconciled the yeah. mistake that dave said he had made by yeah. cutting him um she didn't seem that terribly forgiving i thought she was but she was just right she was being nice yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. being nice but uh, that, that's a little bit of tv history but i was going to show this but uh, i'm not it's probably not the right time but um yesterday was my birthday and Happy birthday please, to you. Happy hold, birthday. Hold, the, hold, hold the applause. Hold the applause. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I posted this. Uh, you know, I got a lot of greetings on Facebook, but this is the one I, I pulled out from last year. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, oh, yeah. What did it say? Have a wonderful yeah. birthday, Rick Shack. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the one I'll miss. Yeah. Yeah. Right well, in the heart. You know, I'll, I'll I'll miss everything about the guy. Yeah, I think you're you're saying earlier that that uh, it it hasn't quite hit you until a few days later, and and I'm feeling the same. You know, I, I was too busy preparing stuff. Yeah, I him. was I was too numb. You know, yeah. and each day that passes, I find myself I have a moment where my heart just sinks. You know, I go oh, you know, and then I get back together and I go on with my life. You know. Mm -hmm. But it, it's not easy. Have you got your hand up there? Yeah. Um, I don't know at the show, Don, whose idea was it to do the whole bit with Bruce Willis? Oh, <laughs> yippee ki yay Jackie. yippee oh, ki But it seems like whenever Willis went on the show, he would always like, there was a couple of times Shecky was mentioned or, but it was like, okay, whoever he was did punched. This, he was either punched or he was shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he, I, he, I, I was just the, the best I one. Was just, it was, at, I'm sure that was all the writers doing, and, and I don't know who was responsible. I think it was people who wanted to kill Shecky off. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the, the one I like is when he's delivering donuts. Yeah. And and Bruce Willis shoots him with a machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> and the other I'm thing tempted is, to message Steve Young right now and ask him, but I don't know if he'll get back in time. I'll try and find out with the next week. Yeah. But the other question that you might know now, the last episode of the CBS show, the final, that great collage with Evergreen. Yeah. Who 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 ever Everlong. Everlong, I'm sorry. Everlong. Yeah. Who who that was brilliant. That was Barbara Gaines. Yeah. Um uh and Randy Grosick. Randy Grosick and, and yeah. the editor uh, whose name, oh, geez, I, mean, I should have it and I probably don't. Yeah. Uh, Randy, Randy was my go to person on the uh, on Shecky's. Mark Spada. I mean, I, I was impressed with just how far back they reached. It, it was just like, wait a minute, you know, it was just, and then that last empty seat that did it to me. That was like, that's it, done. <laughs> Yeah, no, he had left the stage by the time that was over. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, this uh, yeah, this so book, Mark, it's called The Last Days of Letterman. Uh, this What spawned this book was the author, Scott Ryan, uh, wanting to have a breakdown of that collage and, and exactly what into it, because it is it is because making that collage uh, to live music and 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 actually there's a whole bunch of. Uh, behind the scenes tomfoolery that happened uh the rehearsal went perfect but the actual broadcast didn't and there was a race uh, to right to the very very end um a couple members didn't make it to the after party which is pretty crazy um because that was a big deal uh because of that so and then it turned into a book that celebrates the last six weeks of letterman but the whole genesis of this book was the breakdown of that collage 
And we're going to be actually dedicating an episode of the Letterman podcast to that coming forward too. M- m- mention uh, Adam Nedef. <laughs> well, yeah, because then there's a guy two days later, or maybe it was even the next day. It was the next day. I don't know how interesting Adam <laughs> this is to any of us, actually, to be honest with you. What's that? I don't know how interesting this is to any of us. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm fascinated I apologize. By it. Sorry, yeah. I apologize. I don't But care. yeah, the next day there was a guy named Adam <laughs> Nedef or Nedef who took the entire collage and broke it down frame by frame. And Shecky's actually in a bunch of those frames too, which is which is really, really neat. But it's 510 photos, I think. Yeah, no, it was a great, it was a great collage. Yeah. And it was all photographs, if I remember correctly. It wasn't video. A couple of videos. A, a couple of video. Yeah. Farrah Fawcett. Uh she was video and then some fireworks and some explosions and things like that. What I heard was that that collage was what Dave decided he wanted like weeks and weeks, maybe months. Oh, yeah. They, they started that in January. Yeah. 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 That he said, that's the best way to end. Just end it with photographs and I'll be gone by the time it's on. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, so we, we, you know, my question again goes, what happens to all that? mental ability all that information that's stored in a brain that's no longer functioning you know how and and that goes for anybody of greatness anybody who is is studied had a lifelong study of something and usually when they get older they even get better at it you know they they because they've they've gotten more and more information and more and more information and you and you begin to wonder well you know what the hell's that all about you know it's like Marlon Brando said on his deathbed. And I always thought this was one of the greatest uh, things anybody's ever said, last words anybody ever said. And that was, what was that all about? <laughs> yeah. um, it's better than the horror of the horror, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Or, or where's, where's my donut? <laughs> Where, where's my donut? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you never, of course, uh, Paula was never here when Shecky was here, but you, you would have loved, you would have liked Shecky. He was a good guy. He was a good guy. But you, the, got, to, you got to know him. Yeah. I, I, I absolutely did. You know what I was thinking about, too, because I had recently seen it to, uh, uh, on uh, uh, some TV program, um, this thing about Scorsese and how he had, how he had um, saved a lot of early films. Yeah, and reconstructed a lot of early films, and you were talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he was a he was he was a guy who loved old movies and and restored. Right, them. right. Yeah, and I wonder how many, maybe wonder how many Shecky's there are out there, you know, and and did Scorsese? Oh, there, there are. I think Dom will agree with me on this one. There are a lot of Shecky's out there. There are people who are just so involved in film. I mean, uh, Leonard Maltin was another one of them. Leonard Malton was one of Shecky's closest friends. And there's Shecky Green. Shecky. Shecky. <laughs> and, and literally another Shecky. Yes. <laughs> oh. uh, but I mean, the, the, when I, you know, I used to go down to these things where they would trade out of the back of the cars. And these guys were just as knowledgeable as Shecky. I mean, Shecky yeah. was, am I right, Don? They were, they were, a, you, did you know any of them? No, no. I, I, oh. I, I I was not part of his film orbit. You know, there's funny. He had these different orbits. You know, he had the film orbit. He had the Letterman show orbit. Um, he had the uh, me orbit. You know, <laughs> I was one of those people that all these other orbits didn't even know existed. So, um, uh, he had the all these compartmentalized groups of friends. Uh, and it, it was very, very interesting. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of people missing him right now. And he's getting a lot of credit that's due him. Uh, right, Edward Berger? That's right. Okay. <laughs> he's our th- that's right guy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry, the other day when I was... Oh, no, yeah, home, I got your message. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I felt compelled to send you a message saying, I'm sorry I didn't have you say goodbye. But I didn't say goodbye to anybody on that. Yeah, yeah that's I, okay. Don't thing. worry, don't worry. Yeah, well, I don't want to upset the one guy whose voice I need on this show. That's right. It's the only voice, <laughs> it's the only voice that's more nurturing to broadcasting <laughs> than mine. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh. By the way, folks, just in case you don't know, that is his real voice. That's right. 
<laughs> if you listen carefully, they mentioned my name at the Academy Awards. So yeah, yeah. they did. I yeah, heard it. Unfortunately, yeah. it was the in the memoriam. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always leave people out of that in memoriam, though. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, was Gilbert Gottfried on the In Memoriam last year or this year? Or should he have been in this year? Well, that would, that would have been TV, I think, not not. No, uh, films. no. Oh, he no, he was in films. He was in yeah. films. Yeah. yeah. When, did, when did he pass? Uh, Gilbert? Last yeah. year. But I can't, I can't remember the date on it. Okay. So if it was before the Oscars, then he was on it. And if it was after the Oscars, he wasn't on it. Yeah, April 12th, 22, he died. So, damn you. It should have been this year. April 12th, 22. <laughs> April 12th, 22. Yeah. So, he went the Oscars was before that. Yeah. So, they didn't yep. have Gilbert up there. I'm surprised because he's he's made a lot of those. I mean, the SAG in memoriam and so on. But I understand if you go to the, uh, the uh, website for the uh, Academy, they have a reel of just everybody. But you know who does the most complete version of that? CBS Sunday Morning every year. Mm -hmm. does it, and it, it sometimes goes on for 15 minutes. I mean, they get down to the smallest minutiae. Plus, they're also dealing in, in people in politics and everything else, too. So, so will Rick be of, named next year as what? a film historian? No. No? No. No. I mean, he, 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 the academy doesn't he's he's too believe it or not he's too small a guy in that respect you know uh they, they if they started doing that they'd have to open it up to a whole bunch of other people you know it's a question of you got what five minutes let's say yeah. mm -hmm. how many do you name i'm sure there were more people that died last year i don't think i saw on that list of the woman who was shot by alec baldwin <laughs> okay and and as uh jimmy kimmel said um he said oh by the way go online now we're taking a vote should we put robert blake in the in memoriam uh, <laughs> and um they didn't by the way it, but it was it's too much at the last minute mm -hmm. you know to kind of get it in there but uh i i thought it uh it, I, I think robert blake gone Geez, did, was it you that mentioned it uh, to me? Uh, uh, it was actually a Steve Weiner joke. It happened within the same 24 hours, but you were right. It happened on the 9th and Shecky went on the 10th, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, he died the same day that Robert Blake died was, was the thing that somebody said. Yeah. And he was a little rascal. Yeah, 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 he was a little rascal. Yeah. See, you remember that. A lot of people don't remember that. Well, I mean, I was a child of the 70s, so we watched Our okay. Gang and Little Rascals yeah. on reruns, and then when he was on Beretta, yeah. just yeah. somehow finding out, how, oh, yeah, that's that's the yeah. guy that plays Beretta, and he was such such a cute little boy. But I'll top you <laughs> on that. Uh, he was Little Beaver in the Red Rider serials. That's the one I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was also the kid in Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Who goes up to? I believe it's is oh. is it is it Bogart or is it John Huston in that movie, and tries to sell him something, and that's 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 Robert Blake. <laughs> this is a kid you could you could go back and you could almost watch him being born on film, you know. <laughs> and there's so few of those people that we had that we grew up with that we saw them as children and then we saw them as adults. Elizabeth Taylor was another one of those. Mm -hmm. Judy Garland, now, Harry yeah. Shearer. Nat Jody Foster, Foster. Jody Foster, uh, and Natalie Wood, Judy Garland, Judy Garland, of course. <laughs> so oh, few. Oh, Bill Mommy. How long, how young was Judy Garland though when she first appeared on film? I think she was a lot older, say, than Shirley Temple. Mm -hmm. Oh, how about Baby Rosemary? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Baby Rosemary uh, became Rosemary, I guess. Oh, and what was she on? Big Van Dyke show. And she was. No, on, but what was she on oh, as a baby? Oh, oh uh, there was a film, for instance, I remember with W.C. Fields called International House. And she was known for the fact that she was this little kid with this just huge voice. This, it could do jazz and blah, 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 you know, and she's like, she's like five years old. <laughs> baby Rosemary. I wonder, how long they kept, I wonder how long they kept calling her baby. 
Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. Good. Little question. Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But we don't have a lot of film on Stevie Wonder at that age. We have some, oh. some TV. But I mean, um, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., yeah, he was, he was tap dancing as a little five year old. Right. Wow. Well, hey, this has been another uh, uh, tribute to Shecky. Right. <laughs> yes, it should be. And I've yeah. enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, and uh, I, I thank you, Charlene, for being here once again. Thank you. Marjorie Miller, thank you. What's for dinner? <laughs> Chinese. Chinese. Oh, you're ordering out. Oh. Okay, it just, just arrived. It used to be she used to make me wonderful meals for dinner. And now it's all, hey, uh, that's another delivery I have. What? Food. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paula, always a pleasure seeing you out there. And uh, where are you again? You're in. I keep forgetting. Some some place in the wilds of Ohio. I'm in Akron. Akron. Yeah, I thought it was Akron. I didn't want to be wrong. I, I listen uh, um, uh, also to our good friend Mandy O'Brien. I love you, Mandy. Love having you here. Love you guys. You're our you're our kind of Darla of the rascals <laughs> here. Hold on. Yeah, uh, Mark, yeah Mark, sorry, I've I've lost a bookkeeper, so I'm having to uh, yeah. do all the work. For uh, this uh, 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 by the way, Marjorie, if you're the Darla, Marjorie is the Miss Crabtree. Ooh. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that counts for with that. And 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 of course. Uh, Let's see who would uh, who would Charlie be? Uh, well, <laughs> there's only one black kid in the little hospitals, wasn't there? There were a couple over time. Over time, yeah. Buck Wheat and Stymie. Stymie was one Stimey. of the biggest stars in the in the era. Yeah. I what? love Stymie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, Len the Frisco. You son of a bitch. Good having you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like you. I like you, Len. We've had lunch together. We have. How many of these people can claim that? That's right. Well, all I can. Man, Mandy and I have had lunch. Or That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're That's just right. a slut, Len. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> and of course, Mike Chisholm, who is up there and out there in Canada, our, our neighbor to the north. Uh, I'd like it to be our enemy to the north so we can go to war with Canada. <laughs> Because oh, after all, it is a war we can win. Okay. <laughs> uh, Scott Boddicker, always good to have you here, Scott, from Texas. And uh, you've been very quiet today, Mr. Nunn, but uh, Vernon, uh, nice having you here as always. And of course, uh, our old friend Mark Thorner here uh, joining us and the fabulous Don Giller, who has been joining us lately, and I hope you'll continue to do so, Don. Before we go, and 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 I'm not going to elaborate, as as you won't either, but thank you for our last uh, series of correspondence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very helpful, yeah. and we'll see what uh, happens. My my feeling was, it was about returning some tapes that Shecky had had. Well, let's, let's, not, let's not get into that if we can. Yeah, but I'm, I was thinking about, I don't know if you need to return them, but, you know, that's very We're honest of you. Well, yeah. that's that's not quite it, but but that's that's uh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it's a pleasure. Anything I can do. Thank you. It's and a, finally, finally, to close off the whole thing, lest I forget, ladies and gentlemen, here's our old friend Edward Berger to say, "That's all, folks." Okay. Yay. Everybody, wave goodbye. We'll see you all later. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.